We're back with our Tri-State Office Furniture Tweet of the Night. Comes from Colin Dunlap of the Fan Morning Show. It says, when Jalen Hurts telling FedEx Field to fix their stadium, I thought of this. What's the biggest dump in sports you've ever been to? He says, Legion Field. I've been there for um, one of those bowl games that Pitt played in a long time ago. But uh, Oakland Alameda Coliseum will still be on my list, Chris. I don't know about you, but that's... A dump. Wasn't the raw sewage a big deal in Oakland Almeida Coliseum? Yeah. Uh, that was one thing. Uh, I know Pony said that when you would go to a football game there, there were certain maybe pleasant pungent aromas outside the stadium that were less pleasant <laughs> once you got inside. Uh, the biggest dump I ever uh, attended a game at, I think I was at a baseball game there, I definitely was at a football game there, was Cleveland Municipal Stadium in the early uh, to mid-90s, which by that point had to be, what, 70-something yeah, years old, yeah. I would imagine, 60 years old. Terrible locker that rooms. That place was, oh, was that place god-awful. And I remember as a kid thinking you had hit a baseball like three miles to get it over the fence <laughs> there or hit it off of Jose Canseco's head. <laughs> we have some other tweets real quick. Ray Pinkowski says, more proof of why Sidney Crosby is still the best 200-foot player in the game. Pens give St. Louis the blues. And we have this one. Drew Kane <laughs> says, hard to believe the Penguins – have won nine in a row, and they're only fourth in the Metro. Well, Drew, I'll remind you that the Florida Panthers started off a ridiculously hot style. So did Tampa. There are a lot of good teams in there. We'll see how it goes. It's a long season, but they should be in position to at least contend in their conference. Let's go out to um, Ryan and Shaler. Ryan, what's going on? Hey, Bob. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Um, yeah, big pens win tonight. I wanted to switch gears a bit. I saw Pitt basketball. Unfortunately, lost another one tonight. Mm -hmm. Close, Close game, game to Louisville, but they lost, yep. Yeah, ex exactly. So I, I wanted to ask you, what, what do you think will happen first? Pitt basketball gets competitive again or the Pittsburgh Pirates? I'm a fan of the Jamie Dixon <laughs> days, so I want them back. So. Uh, I think those, those were the glory days, no doubt. Um, I'll say Pitt. Chris? Yeah, it's, it's Pitt. It's pretty easy for me that it's Pitt because you need fewer great players at the same time to make that program suddenly turn around. Three ACC losses, by the way, by a combined five points. But you know what? It's getting very uh, late early out there for Jeff Cable to be stacking moral victories. His team needs to be finishing these games, and they're not. And he, he bags these three wins. It's totally different. But guess what? He didn't. Nope. All right, Chuck, real quick in Westview, you're going to be our final caller. What's up, Chuck? Hey, Bob, how you doing? I got to say a couple things. Uh, I disagree with that last two last call when he said the Penguins stink. They're they're great, you know. They're playing good hockey, and Chris, I disagree with you. T.J. Watt is going to win the Defense Player of the Year. By the way, Micah Parsons has put an amazing. I'm not. I'm not trying not to give him the credit he deserves, because I, I'm just looking at when Watt's not in there, what happens to their team versus when he's in there, and 21 and a half sacks minus three games is still very, very telling to me. So. I mean, he's going great. to win it. He's going to win it because he's going to probably set the sack record. That would be my guess, and they'll give it to him. But it would be like when Cabrera won the AL MVP, when Trout should have won Rookie of the Year and MVP because he was filling up the stat sheet. I was right about then, about that then. I'm right about this now, but that's okay. I'll take the burden of being unpopular and giving the unpopular opinions. Not, the shoulders are broad, Pomp. I can handle them. <laughs> it's just opinions, and we all have them, and that's why we do shows like this. We thank all of you out there for those, Chris. We'll see you again later in the week. That's going to do it for us. We'll be back at you tomorrow at 1035 right here for another edition of the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Good night, everyone.